Good evening everyone, my name is John, my first video on Trinity Drones channel. What am I trying to achieve? Uh, well, um, I've learned a lot also by looking at videos on YouTube that everybody else has put up. So this is just one way of putting a little bit back. So if there's any inaccuracies or something that I've left out, just drop me a line. We can make it accurate for anybody that looks at the video. On the first video, I'm just going to share a little bit about the mini picks. There we go. Uh, courtesy of Radio Link. And we're going to open up the box, see what's inside. And then on the next video, we're going to actually configure it. I think I'll be putting it on the hexacopter. And uh, so on the next video, we'll configure it. And uh, take it out to fly. Right, let's get started. Right, let's get going. I've opened up the anti-static bags and uh, taken everything out. Just one thing which I wanted to comment, all the other things were nicely in uh, um, anti-static bags, <coughs> but the uh, mini picks was in this mounting bracket which is very neat but uh, doesn't give much protection for anti-static maybe that's one thing to look at <coughs> speaking of anti-static always a good idea to invest in one of these things a uh, bit of anti-static damage can cause your drone to unexpectedly drop we don't want that now Right, let's start with the mini picks. There we go. There's uh, the power connector, the safety switch and buzzer connector, and then of course we've got the your radio input. Just trying to get it to focus, <laughs> and then of course your GPS and I2C connection is on the same port and at the bottom you've got your telemetry ports 1 and 2 <coughs> and on the side your 6 ESC connectors note it's only 6 of course it's a smaller controller so horses for courses and on the side you've got your USB port that you use to configure program and flash or mini picks of course a lot of you would say where's the slot for the SD card it does not have a slot for an SD card I quiz them on this let me just get the I'll, I'll put up the picture um, um, on the laptop screen a little bit later but basically it comes down to slotting the SD card onto your Telem 2 port which of course makes you lose your Telem 2 port but that's it can fly uh, I was told, we'll have to see, without the SD card, uh, but if you want flight logging, of course, you would have to plug in your SD card. So just take a note of that. Right, let's look at all the other goodies in the box. There's the safety switch and buzzer. <coughs> a couple of cables. And uh, there's your GPS, which of course is a TS-100. Uh, looking forward to see how this performs on the other drone that I built up used an SE-100. And here's your power module. It's your low ESR cap. And... I to see bus extender and this looks like a remote LED and of course some damping pads so that's the contents of the uh, box let's get straight into <coughs> connecting it up I'm going to swing this uh, camera over to the screen just now but we just want to connect it quickly I've connected my cable to the back of 
the um, laptop and I'm just going to connect this up now let's just see if it there we go flashing LEDs it should go into blue red now there we go calibrating the accelerometers there's a double flash of course which means a pre-arm failure which I would have expected because there's nothing connected nothing calibrated either so all looks well now I'm going to swing over the camera so sorry for the movement I'll try and keep this as smooth as possible Sorry about that. <clears throat> Hopefully I can get myself a nice screen grabber soon. On the screen I've put up the, uh, the web page that gives the information on the mini picks. There's for instance the pinouts. I'm not too sure if you can make that out. Ground, ground, voltage, current, VCC, VCC and so on. So it does give you the pinouts. Oh, that's the other thing which along with the uh, box there is a, a printed sheet. Unfortunately that sheet doesn't have the pinouts but it, has, it does have some diagrams of how to connect the mini picks in typical, typical configurations but uh, there is some information on the radio link website uh, I'll, I'll see if i can drop the link on the description part of this video then you can go and have a look one thing the, the being a new controller obviously the information is not that wide widely available yet i want to say something about this the parameters <coughs> There's two things I want to make a note of or draw your attention to. The barometer is an LPS 22HB. I'm going to put up the uh, parameter or specifications for the Pix Hawk. And there you can see the barometer for the Pix Hawk. Is that visible? There we go. MS5611. So there's a difference in the barometer now I had a look at the specs very quickly I'll analyze it a, a bit better later on but it might be a little bit better barometer on you we'll have to see then of course uh, a very important point to notice is that all the connectors are JSTGH connectors and of course the the, the standard Pixhawk has got DF13 connectors so just pay attention to that. That is a different connector. So you can't connect your standard um, peripherals or sensors directly onto the mini picks. Now personally I've tried to get hold of these connectors. They are not widely available. Um, so, But it, it, it is a very good connector. It slots in very easily and it has a clicking action I'll show you guys just now and you need to pull very hard um, roughly onto it to actually dislodge the connector so very nice connectors but it is a bit difficult to get hold of at this stage hopefully the availability will improve of course you can see here that um, there's far less ports on the mini picks than on the picks hawk which of course is understandable giving the uh, smaller footprint you've got one thing I'm very curious to see is if I just scroll up sorry for the blurring screen I suspect where do they say this? ah there we go <coughs> vibration damping by software so they've done some software damping on the uh, barometer signals so uh, hmm should be interesting to see how that performs. 
there's a link here uh, to a mission planner. Now, initial reading up suggested that you can only use this mission planner. I posed this question to them, and what in fact is true is that you only need this mission planner to do firmware upgrades. Once you've got your firmware upgrade, you can use the standard mission planner. Uh, this will also, what I've found, is that this mission planner loads the drivers to be able to talk to Minipix. The first in, uh, try that I did, I used the standard mission planner. And, of course, it didn't recognize the driver um, once I connected the Minipix. So that's that's something to keep in mind. It's not a train smash, because uh, the uh, two mission planners look pretty much the same. There's one page which seems to be missing uh, on this one as opposed to the standard, but pretty much everything else seems to be very close. Okay. All right, so speaking of mission planner, there we go. All right, you, I can't Let me just move the so you can see the top screen there. Sorry for the jerking. Uh, normal story. You click on your COM port and you say, let me just check how everything's still connected. And you say connect and off you go. Same type of story. And then you click on top. There by initial setup. And of course, normal story where you get your frame type selection, accelerometer calibration, and all, all the uh, setups. So, pretty much the same type of interface as the standard mission planner right so that's briefly it um, I'm going to conclude this video just with that short introduction once uh, I think on the next video uh, we can actually tackle how to configure it I'm going to put it on a quadcopter and uh, then configure it and see how it flies take it out for a maiden flight Join us then again. See you later.